welcome to a cold Glencoe. I say Glencoe, I'm in Balahulish actually at the house, but um, it is really cold this morning. It is quite clear, there's a little bit of cloud and it's seven o'clock in the morning. So I'm having to keep my voice a little bit just so I don't wake the neighbours. Now, a week and a half ago, I did a great vlog from Ben Akrilas looking over the buckle and I was trying to get sunset on the buckle and it actually turned out quite well. I'll pop the link at the top here. But what I actually thought would, could he do a nice sunrise low down, looking up from the bottom, looking up the buckle? And there is some fantastic locations around that area. So what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to jump in the car. I'm going to head back up with plenty of time. The weather looks set fair. There might be a good sunrise, hopefully not too much cloud. And let's see if we get a great shot looking from the buckle at the bottom, looking up. Come and join me. Let's see how we get on. So here we are at Lagengarve Cottage at the top end of Glencoe. There it is over there. You've got the buckle behind. The cottage itself is owned by the Scottish Mountaineering Club. So if you remember, you can go and rent it out, which is quite a great spot to open your curtains in the morning, isn't it? The, uh, the club bought it about 1946, but before that it was a little crofter's house. So what the plan is, is this area is fantastic for locations. There's at least five real top quality compositions around here. And you can spend a good half a morning at least just going around getting them compositions. Now the sunrise is going to rise over to this, this up to the east, obviously. I'm going to flip you around and show you what I'm looking at. So there is sunrise. There's on that left hand side is Ben Aculas. I did a video a few weeks ago, about a couple of weeks ago, from the top of there nearly. So I will pop that. I can see somebody at the top right up there as well, obviously another photographer. And I'll pop the link up there on the top corner there for you. And there is the sort of Rannoch Moor coming around. And what you can see is there's a few clouds. It's high pressure, a little bit of transitional high pressure today. And what that was worried about was no cloud at all. But what I've got is I've got some lovely wispy cloud. The only downside is just at the bottom, there's quite a thick bank and that's where that sun's going to rise. There is a few gaps and if they sort of come through those holes, they will light up and backlight all that cloud, which will be amazing. As I pan around, you can see this is the shot I'm going to look at. Here is the buckle itself. Here is Coriantulloch, which is a bit of a dodgy one, it really is, because it's north facing, so it fills up with snow. And you can see this, this is probably the first significant snow we've had on the mountains this week. So it's starting to look fantastic. I've got the cottage. I've, I've got another concern, because as I come around next to the car here, oh dear, yes, there's a big group of photographers there. Must be on a course or something. Um, so they are going to be in the shot where I wanted to shoot. And why is it somebody in a red jacket? It's always a red jacket, isn't it? Anyway, I think what I'm going to do now then, because they're there, is I'm going to come around the vehicle and I'm probably going to go and shoot up a bit higher up here and try and get sunrise looking back the way. And hopefully by that time, these guys have got out of the shot, but they're all primed, ready for the sunrise. But it's still a little bit early. I've still got about 30 minutes yet, so I'm not in any rush.
So I've come up to the, just in front of the A82, which is behind me now. I've wandered around, I'm struggling with a bit of composition, but I've found something that works quite well. And the key with this location is by being slightly elevated, it just gives me a great vista looking out with the sunrise if it comes, hopefully. It is clouding up a little bit more, which I'm a bit worried about. And also you've got to be careful of the overlap. When you come back up to the top where you park and then come over a bit, there's the trees to the right hand side of the cottage. I'll show you what I mean if I flip you around up. So as you come on in, you'll see them trees to the right hand side of the cottage. Now, if I walk all the way over, them trees will eventually start overlapping the cottage. Still a bit of a way to go. And that's what you'll be careful of. Watch that overlap again. I'll come over. You can just kind of now nah, just start seeing it overlapping. So I don't want that. And also I can see the massive, massive photographers all in the distance with the man with the red jacket. I'm going to come back again to where I thought it was working quite well. And you can see now there's some good separation between the trees on the right hand side of the cottage. So that works really well. I think the composition is good. I'm going to have to clone some of these bodies out and hopefully when that sun rises, they start getting dipping down a bit. You can just see a bit of sun on the top of the clouds there, but uh, I don't know whether it's going to work or not. It's gone a bit pink above me, um, but yeah, Ooh, we'll see. Okay, I'm going to talk you through the composition on the back of the camera here now you can see. And what I decided to do in the end is to go for a portrait orientation. And what I've done is I've put on the wide angle lens, so this is the 16 to 35. And then by just coming over this foreground interest here, I've got a bit of distortion which accentuates this foreground interest. And that is now going to give me some depth because what I was concerned about is if I lost this, it goes quite a flat shot. Oh, it's going very pink now. I'm, I'm going to have to take a shot in a minute. Uh, I got quite a flat shot, so um, by putting this in, it actually works quite well. It gives me some depth to the shot, so I know the distance. This is very close to the camera. This is intermediate. That's a long way away. And there's the buckle coming up there as well. So I like that shot. I'm going to have to rush now because it is starting to go. I might be in luck here, fingers crossed. Oh, that was a corker, weren't it? I really like that shot. It was fantastic. Perfect. A bit of cloning out to do, and I did have to focus stack, but I think it was a really great shot. Now, while I have the light, sometimes it's easy just to get yourself planted in one location, and all you're going to do then is get lots of shots of the same thing. You're only going to use one. So I had the opportunity with that light there. I thought, I'm going to run down because I know where there's another location nearby. So I pegged it down, got all my stuff, pegged it down really quick, dragging the dog as well got to this new location now if you come in to park at Lagengarve Cottage you can park at the car park the problem is it's a bit dodgy so if you've got a low car you're going to lose your sump but as you park up there there's a burn that goes all the way down to the cottage and just there there's a little bridge that comes across a really old-fashioned bridge all distressed it's great I'll flip you around and show you hopefully the dog will get out of the way and there it is though it's a lovely bridge and because it's nice and distressed, you get all these textures and details, which is wonderful. And the other good thing is the orientation just leads the eye down to the cottage, to Lagengard Cottage over there. So it's a great shot, that foreground interest and leading the eye down to the cottage. And then I've got all that pink in the foreground there and then the sky is fantastic. So yeah, really great shot. I've got the composition set up. I'm gonna give it a go just before the light goes. So let's see how this one goes.
So that was a great shot as well. I'm delighted with that. having a great morning this morning. I told you there's a few locations around here. There's another couple of compositions, but what I'm looking at over here is the light is just coming over a little bit tricky. Let me see if I can reduce your exposure, but it's a little bit tricky, but the light is just coming over Mila Vuli here. It's coming down. Now where we are with the buckle and lagging gold cottages, this is all in the shade. So I'm not going to see any more light on this for quite a while. If I pan around to the wee buckle, just at the top, I don't know if you'll see it, there's a little bit of light on the top of that wee buckle. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot round to another location and I'm going to come all the way around the front end of the buckle here and try and get sort of the east face of the buckle which is going to be directly opposite that light. There's a bit of cloud so it might just go behind Mila Vuli for a little bit but that's not a problem I'm going to just got to wait I've got plenty of time there's no rush so we're going to juice up on the A82 go down a bit and then go to another location and it's a beautiful shot with a waterfall in it It'd be quite nice to slow that down a little bit so fingers crossed we get a bit of light. So let's go and jump in the car and let's see what we get. So after a bit of a long trek across the boggy moor, luckily the wellies are on, I knew it was going to be boggy, I've got to this fantastic waterfall, it's really nice, this is the River Coupal, it goes all the way down to Glen Etive, and there's some great shots all the way down the River Coupal, but this waterfall works really well, and the reason being is its orientation does lead the eye up to the buckle. Now the light has gone a bit naff if I'm being honest. What is great is I've got some cloud formations which are radiating out like starbursts from the top of the buckle and that's given me kind of a leading line in the sky. So if you ever see some clouds that kind of radiate out it's worth getting in a position where you can get them to lead into the subject matter which is the buckle itself. So I'm quite pleased with that. I'm really delighted. I'm going to grab a shot. It might be more of a moody shot because that light has gone, but even so, it's still a great image. Okay, that's me set up now with the composition. And what I've got is I've got the river cupel coming down here, and then it just tails off, this drops off here, and you can see this little water waterfall and disappears off. And the tail of the waterfall leads the eye up to the mountain, which is what am I looking for? I was originally in a bit of a position where my composition was straight up and down and that means I don't utilise when your eye makes the journey through the shot these areas around in the photograph. So by moving over a little bit to the right I've stretched this out, separated this from this and that allows me to maximise the journey my eye makes through the image which is all the way up here like that. So that's great. Now in terms of composition wise a lot of people like this rule of thirds but I've got to say for this composition this is what we call a balance shot. The mountain is right in the middle of the shot, completely breaking the rule of thirds, which is what I'm looking for in this image, mainly because the mountain itself is on a pyramid shape. So it's quite symmetrical anyway. Now, because I'm in video mode, there's not much gap between the top of the mountain because I lose a bit, but actually in the image, I've got a little bit more gap between there. Just be careful of that, that you don't crop out the top of the mountain when you do print these things out and if you put them in a mount you're going to lose a bit of the image and I've made this mistake particularly at this location where I haven't quite got the amount of gap between the top of the image so then when you put the mount on it's very close to the top and I need a bit more sky in it 
So the only reason it looks like this now is because I'm in video mode and I, I, I zoom in a little bit when I'm in video mode. Um, but yeah, I think this composition is really going to work. The light has just come out. It's amazing light. I'm happy with it. Let's see what we get. Well, that was a great morning. I hope you enjoyed that. Give me a thumbs up if you really like that video. I enjoyed it, it was brilliant. If you really like it, do the subscribe for me, that'd be great. It really does help me out my channel. And if you click on the bell icon, you'll always get a notification next time I post another video. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Fern, leave the drone, leave. Good girl, it's done nothing to you. Leave it. Stay. Stay, Fern. Leave the drone. Leave it. Leave, leave the drone. Fern, leave it. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it, Fern. Leave it. Leave it.